Hey guys, and welcome back to some more Factorio, sending supporters to space. And we are here in the middle of uh, an island right next to a bigger island. So the landfilling for the oil is nearly done. I've just left this open. Uh, no, we're not creating an aquarium or something. I've left this, left this open just to finish it out uh, on camera here with you guys. Uh, but we've landfilled. I had a little help come in just with the landfilling because it was extremely tedious and just a pain to do on my own. Um, and the reason I didn't show any of it is because, again, it was like extremely tedious because it has to be um, like right, like perfect. Um, so here is where the main oil is going to go, um, right here. And then the tracks actually come from down here. And we just have these little teeny bridges, just enough for a track to go over, which is really cool because, um, the track is going to, uh, you know, it's going to be kind of going across the water. If you think, uh, like spirited away, if you've seen that movie at all, kind of like that, it's going to be really cool. And then this one comes from here. It's not quite as awesome because it kind of comes from this island but uh this is where the uh, sulfur sulfuric acid and batteries and the smelting for the batteries is going to be made and then the exit tracks like the ones that take the uh batteries and the sulfuric acid and the lube and the solid fuel and stuff are all going to go out the top so that will actually be quite a lo uh, long train ride and actually as i'm looking at this this is not even this is, uh, this is going to irritate me. Um, so I have two blueprints. I have one blueprint of, um, and my game sounds are off because this landfilling actually is really loud and it's kind of hard to talk over. Um, let me turn them back up just a little bit here. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I have two blueprints. One of the whole, um, the main oil processing. And then one for the uh, acid. And the reason that I didn't show any more designing on camera past what I did last episode is because the builds, I mean, you'll see when I pull them, uh, pull them out here, the builds are pretty much just a uh, combined version of what I showed last episode. So um, it's just obviously multiple of those oil petroleum builds that I showed. And then, um, and then also some for making lube and then some for making light oil, which will be turned into solid fuel elsewhere. So I was mistaken a minute ago when I said solid fuel would export from here. It's actually going to be light oil that does. Uh, we were going to make, I was going to make rocket fuel here, but the build is actually gigantic for rocket fuel, uh, later realized. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the deal there. Now this didn't have to be a solid island in fact i think some of it i had planned to leave water kind of in between but i feel like just a solid island um it's a lot easier for me uh if need be i suppose we could take uh get water fill or the uh dectorio mod or something that i did spotlight on that actually has like a reasonable recipe for water and we could water fill in some stuff or something later um but anyway so that's that and this this is actually really going to irritate me this is not centered I don't know why it's not. Um, it's going to be a little bit annoying. <laughs> uh, anyway, so these we this was just kind of marked for the rail, and uh, and then yeah. So let's run over here. This actually, while I have some landfill, this can be filled in a bit. This does not need to be so wonky like that. I'm going to try to do it kind of randomly so it, you know, doesn't look. Actually, that looks fairly natural, just so it doesn't look like super weird. Um, but that was a bit annoying to walk across, same with that, and kind of just do that. Okay, so um, these, I'm running over this way because we need to get onto that island, and uh, I do want to show how these rails are going to work here. So the rails are going to zip across here, and we do actually have uh, a stacker we need to go here. Speaking of which, this would be a good time to clear some trees before I build rail and other stuff, because <laughs> these trees are going to be right in the way. This time I'll actually run. You have no many. I've nuked myself so many times, like three or four times, just on this playthrough. It's kind of embarrassing. And these dudes will have to go get some trees in the process. Boom! Sweet. All right. So the stacker for the oil train is going to be out here again. It was kind of too big to have on the island and stuff. And uh, I feel like the trains crossing this rail is going to be really cool. So yeah, the 
the rail is just going to run along here. We're going to have like little uh, like buoys, <laughs> uh, if you imagine, just like a little thing of landfill for the signals. So, yeah, we'll need a couple signals here. Um, they'll just be on like little buoys or something. It would be pretty cool. So this is um, for lining it up the ghosted rails and stuff, but you can kind of get the idea. This is the smack dab middle of this build, which again, why, why is this not centered? Oh, that's going to irritate me. We'll, uh, we can't really take some away without water, water fill rather. I could come more this way actually if I needed to, if I wanted it bigger. Um, it could come more that way. Actually, the reason it's, okay, the reason it's not even is because the build actually isn't even. Um, I'm gonna, so here we go, here's this. Um, you can see it's actually pretty crazy, it's a big build. The reason it's not even is you see these tracks on the left hand, the most left hand side. Um, that's for loading the lube and light oil, so it's actually wider on the left than it is on the right, which makes sense um, why this is not even. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, and I will explain this a bit. Like I said, it's literally just like multiples of the build I showed last time, and uh, it was very, very finicky. It took uh, about an hour and a half or two hours to get everything situated properly, and we had to, you know, had to ratio it out and do the math and stuff, um, and doing that all just for episode, you know, wouldn't be, like I said, many, many times, um, the smaller builds. And I feel like I, I do need to reiterate this because you guys have mentioned that you like seeing the designing and you get upset when I don't show it. I do want to reiterate again that, you know, the smaller builds, the, you know, the like low density structures, the, all the science builds, um, you know, the belt build, the inserter build, which may be with science or whatever, um, you know, the furnace build that makes stuff for science. That stuff, you know, I'm going to do on camera because it's smaller, it's simpler, but the um, smelters, the green circuits, and the oil are like the three biggest things, and they require a lot of messing around, right? So it gets really, really finicky and tedious getting everything right, and it's just not something that's very good episode material. Um, so we're going to go ahead and place this, kind of, and some of these belts in here are just for measurement. Um, but here's what this thing looks like. I think it looks pretty freaking awesome. So this lines up smack dab perfectly. We did actually landfill a little bit too far to the left. Um, all those tracks do need to curve out, so that's fine. And uh, and yeah, so this is how this works. Now the you'll notice the unloaders um, for the oil. It's actually easier to see here when I have this out rather than when I ghost it. Uh, so I'll just hold this here for a second. Um, you can see there that the unloaders for the crude are actually on the left and right there on those kind of things that, the kind of branches that come out from that middle main line. Um, and then the top ones are actually in the main line. And the reason for that is uh, spacing wise, it didn't really work that great to have them jet out as well while keeping all the builds in line. And then also uh, nothing goes past that, right? That the trains aren't going through that part. So having them up there isn't really an issue. Uh, and again, this is like this is the type of stuff we fiddle with rails for like 40 minutes just trying to get this stuff right and and stuff like that. So I think this looks really it actually looks really cool on map view as well. So I'm gonna not stand in the middle of it, and we're going to place him or not? No. So there we go. That's what this thing looks like. So it's uh, I'm gonna have. This is designed for uh, 333 oil trains. That's going to be kind of interesting. It's not really a typical train, but, uh, you know, I wanted the speed as well as the capacity. And the fluid wagons are heavier. They did reduce the wind resistance um, somewhat recently from what it uh, uh, originally was. But, uh, you know, it they are still heavier than cargo wagons. So you do need kind of more more oomph with the uh, locomotives and stuff to move them around. So it is going to be three, three, three. These unload into tanks directly uh, because obviously you want a little bit of storage and then uh, the pumps go directly into tanks for max uh, pumpage and throughput. And it just kind of goes down into the crude here. You know, that would make it easier. This is a crude hookup. This is water. So water for these is going to come from the left over here. Um, so this one, this one, and the one above it make lube. So you'll notice um, these are all advanced oil, right? So it's still water and oil input. Um, the light oil goes, oh, thank you game. Um, sorry, the heavy oil comes over and connects to these guys, which um, 
it looks like a few pipes are actually a little wonky. Um, this actually shouldn't be, like I said, there's still a few kinks, but so this is heavy oil. It comes over this way and underground to that, which makes a lube. So this eats all the heavy oil from this. There's no cracking. Um, all the light oil goes straight up into here um, and is barreled. And then will be picked up uh, up top somewhere up here. Um, we'll have bots. You can see these rope ports. It is a big bot network, but the, um, it's not going to be very many robots, right? All they're doing is just moving some light oil barrels back and forth, and that's it. Um, and then this is lube. So the lube comes out here and up to here and combines from this build and then from this top one into this and our loop train comes in and then we'll bring it to electric engines and the make everything and such and then the petroleum is sent out to the right and barreled and he is sent over uh this away and this is also barreled and then it's actually all sent to this island where the um sulfur and uh, sulfuric acid and batteries and the actual petroleum pickup is so uh yeah so then these just make a uh, light oil period uh again advanced oil so all the petroleum is sent out to the right all the heavy is cracked into light and all the light from that and these is sent up to these barrelers now i do realize we could have uh spun these around right so that these were facing down so the light oil could combine into here except that uh well, actually, the, for light oil, the pipes do line up because they're in the middle. But I, I wanted them all facing the um, same way. Yeah, it's a few extra pipes. We are trying to minimize it. But um, in this case, I would actually ha rather have some extra pipes and an extra barreler than having them, like, swapping directions. Especially because there's nine of these. Um, I, it's not built. Um, there's nine things on this side and nine on the other side. So there would be, like, an odd man out, which would be kind of weird. Uh, so I chose to have them just all face upwards. This is our light uh, barrel carrier. And the reason we're doing barrels rather than fluid wagon for the light is because it's coming from all of these. Um, so it's it would, you, you'd have to like pipe it all the way up and then you'd lose throughput and uh, distributing it. It's a little easier with barrels. Uh, so that's kind of the decision there. Same with uh, petroleum. Petroleum is going to be barrels for the same reason. Um, but uh, lube will be... A fluid tanker obviously the crude will be a fluid tanker um the sulfuric acid i believe will be in barrels as well just because it needs to uh well it needs to go to blue circuits i'm not quite sure that may be a fluid wagon i'm not sure yet so this is how these guys work uh these belts are not necessary and uh yeah so this is delivery it's just a it's normal right hand drive system you know this is the exit, this is the entry. There is a cross over here, but these are stations. Again, this is not a main line or anything, so that's why these cross, these uh, switch things are okay here. There's no other, I mean, the only train's moving here, the one's parked there. Um, and then again, stations unloading to the sides like this, I already explained. And this is this is just literally the build I showed you last episode. That's why I didn't show putting it all together, because this is just nine stamps of what I showed you last episode. Um, and then there's that. So these are passed over. The robo network. If I had a robo port, I actually need a robo port. My stuff is looking for my stuff. Where's my stuff? Uh, did I just like lose my stuff? Is it up here? I had like four boxes of things. Here we go. Whew, that scared me for a second. I was like, damn, I had some important things on my uh, person here. Trash that because my inventory is pretty much full. Um, so a row port, I'm going to place some of these because this coverage actually does matter. Uh, because how this works is you can see the petroleum or the, yeah, the petroleum barrels are in this network. It's going to be kind of a bridge, but not actually a bridge. Um, this network will not connect to the network over here. However, um, these guys, the uh, grabber, the requester for the petroleum to go into sulfuric acid over here will be within this network. So it's kind of a bridge, kind of not a bridge. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit interesting how that works. So let's run over here. Let's run all the way around. Um, but yeah, so this is how this is going to work. I'm super excited. I love these rails just going through the water. And, same, and then up above, the exits will actually be an even longer railway through the water, which will be super cool. Uh, and the, the only ways in and out are through the rails, which I think is a really awesome concept. Uh, now, 
I did, I did, like I said earlier, I did goof a little bit. I think some of, I kind of wanted some water within the acid build to be there. We could come back and fix it later. It's not that big of a deal. As long as I didn't, as long as I didn't mess up the island, that's the important part because this is actually very specific as to where it needs to go for, because of the pumps. So here's our sulfur, sulfuric acid, battery, and smelting for battery build. So here's this guy. He's obviously far smaller than this one. He lines up like that and these rails line up. So this is the um, load and unload for the iron and copper ore over there on the far right that I'm lining the rails up with. They go to the smelting, same smelting design I discussed last episode, except refined and not like wonky crazy. I mean, the beacons are still the same now, but they're actually covering things properly. Um, you know, like I said, the other one was a kind of a concept thing, not the final. This is the final. Um, and then batteries in the middle here with these two rails. Um, now one of these rails in the middle with the station is battery load. And then the other one is actually sulfuric acid load because we do need to send the acid out to blue chips, right? And then that one rail at the very top left, you can see up there, that's actually where the um, petroleum barrels are going to be loaded and sent out. Uh, so you'll notice that if I zoom in here, uh, that assembly there at the top, um, right by that top left rail that goes um, that ump barrels petroleum into um, acid. You can see his requester. So his requester needs to be within this network to the left. And it, it is, if I scooch him over right there, he is. And the pumps don't line up because we I, I purposely landfilled um, not enough because if you go over, you're screwed <laughs> without a mod that fills water. Um, so now that we kind of know where that needs to go, I can landfill the rest of it or, or you know the little bit that needs to be done and not have to be too concerned about um, overdoing it so I know I need at least one more tile so let's go ahead and do that I think this needs to be taller as well you can see that other the uh, petroleum train didn't really fit um, so yeah, I kind of wanted water there in between the smelting. If you can see, there's that whole empty space between the smelting and the batteries. I kind of wanted water there. Again, we can come back later and do it. It's not that huge of a deal. Um, so it looks like those do actually fit. Good thing I did not do two sections of landfill. So let me not stand in the middle of the build again because it can mess up placement. Um, I actually want to pull these back. These could stick out here, but it's a little weird. In fact, I'm tempted. Um, hmm, can't decide where I want it. Here still seems a little close, having them pull up quite that close to the edge, um, but it would allow more room. That's a tough decision. I think having them, I think having them like that would be good. Uh, so gonna go like that and uh, then these guys also for these refineries the water would come from this edge so we would pump this as well um, so that's that this guy is barely in the network which is perfect exactly how it needs to be so he um, requests the petroleum barrels this would need to be turned around I think um, and then ejects the empties into an active provider as usual there would be storage somewhere in here I haven't quite figured out how the storage is gonna work but uh, there's a little bit of storage here so like I said Last episode, this is pretty much what I showed the uh, two sulfur to a sulfuric acid. Now, you'll notice that one of them is direct, direct insert here, and the other passes through a box. And uh, the reason for this is if you space this out more, if you space it out the same way as this to directly, directly insert, um, it throws off the beacon coverage. They don't actually get full beacon coverage because of the spacing. Um, so that's the reason this is like this. Passing through a box really doesn't hurt. Well, it's... Uh, it's like two extra inserters, which I mean, if this were like 10 times the size, it would matter. But overall, it's like eight extra inserters, you know, um, you know, there's a point, you know, it's like if it's adding 100 extra inserters, you don't want to do it. If it's adding five or six extra inserters, it's not, uh, you know, if it allows you to get full beacon coverage, it's fine. Um, and then these guys send the acid to barrel here, which is then sent, um, to, well, it's either carried to here for the batteries or, and then the excess is sent out in a train to go to blues. 
And this is RoboPort coverage. This network and this network are separate. Again, as I showed last episode, you can see this one is lined up right with those passives and then this one ends right at the providers. So there is that little bridge there. And uh, these are stations, so these don't need to come out this way. These would exit up and you can see this is quite a rail ride. And then especially this, well, not that, um, the ones on this side would go all the way up. And the main line would be way up here somewhere. So that's gonna be a bit of a trek, but that's okay. Um, also, you guys did point out last episode that a couple of my circuit machines in the circuit build when I was explaining it were backwards. I do wanna let you know that um, I read that. Very, uh, very much appreciate you pointing that out because I actually had no idea and I fixed it. So those are all tip top shape. And there we go. So oil, oil is pretty much done. I mean, I have all the materials to build this uh, in, in a helicopter and in uh, to make everything. I just don't have them on my person. But this is really exciting because this was the last big thing. I mean, yeah, you know, there's the this red circuits and blue circuits and stuff. But in comparison, those are simple. In fact, I already have red circuit build. Um, this is our red circuit build, which you can't see because uh, here's a red circuit build. We need four of these. Um, they do about 11,000 a minute, which is pretty darn good. Uh, and we need four of them. So that's already done, just may, uh, need to place them, do the rails. Blues are pretty straightforward. They're, you know, not gonna be that complicated at all. And then plastic we are making with the reds, I think I mentioned a while ago, uh, just because for transport density, it's a lot better to transport barrels of uh, petroleum than it is to transport trains of plastic, uh, just, you know, because of the density. Um, so, they're going to be made with the reds pretty much. We need two plastic builds. Each one can support two red builds. And all that stuff is going to go over here. Um, reds maybe up here somewhere and here. And then blues over here and here. So all this needs to move. Um, and then speed modules will actually be made up in here somewhere, I think. Because uh, the reds and greens will be fed in them. Speed ones. Uh, and then, uh, you know, greens will be fed into the reds. The rail logistics is going to be a little bit interesting. There will be a few crossings, which is kind of unavoidable. But for the most part, there actually won't be very many crossings. Um, excuse me. And then we will need to bring coal in as well, which um, it's going to hook into the main line. My best bet that I can think of, we have a huge coal patch down here, 13 million. There's also a coal patch here because um, this is where it gets tricky i think the coal is going to have to cross the ore line which it's not that much that's going to be going through uh you know it's not like 30 trains or something so i think this would be okay just cross this once zip up through here again the whole starter base just imagine it's not here um and he's going to hit a main line up here and then that would drop down into the reds that's the best way i can figure it because i mean there's no coal over here uh, it's kind of weird. I mean, there's, and there's tons of coal here that I could easily tap into 44 million, you know, and that's going to be pretty much our highest coal consumer is the plastic. Uh, now there is oil. There's actually more oil up here, actually pretty darn good oil. Um, and then there's obviously tons of oil down here. So we need, we'll need to set up some oil outposts to get the oil build running. But other than that, it's pretty much ready. Uh, and the oil will have to cross the ore line as well. I mean, like I said, this can't be helped. We've tried to avoid crossings as much as possible, but just due to the fact there's no bridges or tunnels, I mean, you have to pretty much cross at some point somewhere. Um, so, you know, again, it's not like a 70 train, you know, it, it's it's different, right? It's different than like the copper ore main line and the iron ore main line crossing, because each one of those is gonna have like 75 trains. Uh, the oil's not, you know, the oil's not gonna have that, probably not even half that. Um, you know, so having it cross is that big of a deal. And that's the other reason, uh, like a 333 is because even with the fluid wagons, which are heavier, they're gonna have fast acceleration and they're gonna move, well, the top speed's pretty much the same, but they're gonna accelerate faster. So, you know, they'll be able to just zip right across the line without hardly any disturbance. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of, that's that guys. That's, uh, I don't know how long this episode's been. It's been 25 minutes. I think this is great. The oil build is, I mean, you know, didn't technically build anything, but the stamps are there. They'll be built next episode. You saw the design. I tried my best to explain it. I'm trying to lastly, um, just think of anything else I may have missed because, you know, I do want to go through these designs with you guys since I didn't build all of them on camera. 
Um, I mean, pretty standard productivity module where it can be speed beaconed, um, barrelers. These will actually maybe, no, these don't need to be speeded. This one does though. Um, I showed you this build last episode. I just showed you the lube and light oil, which is being transported to make rocket fuel somewhere else. Uh, the rocket fuel and solid fuel will be kind of direct insertion to each other. And the build is actually just huge. And uh, yes, oh, so it's like 22 iron smelters. And then however many of these this is, I don't remember. Um, but for copper, because we do need the extra iron for uh, sulfuric acid as well as the batteries. So these guys will come up. There will be some sort of maybe little mini stacker down here or something. Um, and they'll kind of weave through here. I may have to expand this island passage slightly. Um, at some point I should clean this up because this is ugly as hell. This is when I landfilled for that. Um, this lake's totally landfilled. I don't know if I showed that last episode. Uh... And yeah, so oil will come from the bottom, go up into here, and I believe that's it. Because uh, I also explained last episode the reason this is direct insert here, and it's only six of these, because we added the extra beacons for speed. Just in case you forgot or uh, missed that episode, that is the reason this ratio is different. It's only six crackers, and they're direct in um, to save pipe, and because they're fast enough to do that. And then uh, we have like a cheaty energy source here. This was in creative mode that can easily be removed. No worries, and barrelers here speeded. That's pretty much it, guys. I think that's gonna do it. I'm super, super excited. Once this is built, we are like right on the home stretch because this is what we were waiting for, right? Because we needed the plastic for the red circuits, we needed the acid for the blue circuits. Once this is going, uh, I mean, we can just get that stuff going. Just put it down, figure out the rails, which will be a little bit of a headache, but not too bad, and then just start shipping the stuff off to where it needs to go make the other builds which will be super simple compared to this stuff um making really good progress i'm very happy with where this is going i hope you guys are too but anyway thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i'd love to hear your thoughts as always in the comments and uh if you did enjoy feel free to leave a like but until next time i look forward to seeing you all and do take care